Hey, what's up? Pizza Loving Nerd here. Welcome to a new series on uh, beginning on Linux. Now, the first episode, we're going to talk about the many forms of Linux distributions. So, as you can see, there are tons and tons of Linux distributions. This is on Wikipedia alone. There's no way that this has every single Linux distribution. And I'm going to talk about some. Now, uh, I'm only going to be mentioning some that I find good for beginners. Um, so if you want a more complete list of distributions I would actually use and recommend myself, then check out my Linux Awards video. Link in the description. Now we will be doing this based on how popular, sorted by how popular each distro is on DistroWatch. So the first one is Manjaro. Now, Manjaro is the is not as beginner friendly as some of the other ones I'm going to mention, but uh, it is still pretty beginner friendly and it is based on Arch Linux, which itself is less beginner friendly than most distributions. However, this is basically a beginner friendly way of getting into Arch Linux. Now, I'm going to do Arch Linux later in this series. So, yeah, Manjaro is pretty good. The only issue with it is some is Manjaro has been known for getting boot looping issues, and I've actually experienced boot looping issues on it before. However, uh, if you don't get boot loop issues, uh, then this is a great distro. The next distro we'll be talking about is Linux Mint. Now, uh, Linux Mint is one of the most popular Linux distributions. So, uh, this takes Ubuntu, which basically takes Debian and makes it easier, and it makes Ubuntu easier. So, uh, it's got three editions, Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. And if you use Mint, you're probably going to want to go with the Cinnamon edition. But now, Cinnamon is made by the same team as this distro, so it's the most, it's designed the most for, it's designed the most for, uh, for this distro. So, Cinnamon's made for this distro, basically. So, Linux Mint is pretty good. Now, I'm going to get to what desktops are in a different video. Now, the next is Elementary OS. Now, if you just want a sort of something similar to Mac OS, uh, it's actually very similar because it's got its own ecosystem. It's got a Mac OS-like interface, pretty close to Mac OS theming. And just like Apple, it's got a, um, what's the word? Very loyal community to it. So, yeah. But Elementary OS is has a great software center, so does Mint and Manjaro. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty great distro. Now, the reason I don't use it, I really like Elementary OS. It's just there's an issue where when I use the laptop track pack, trackpad and uh, I drag and drop a file to my desktop, sometimes it freezes the OS and I have to reboot. But, uh, that only happens with a trackpad on my laptop. Did I say my desktop? My laptop. And on my desktop using a normal mouse, or my laptop using a normal mouse. A normal mouse looks completely fine. Elementary OS ha also has some, uh, applications that are exclusive to just this distro. And the only other way to get it on other distros is through the Arch user repository or something like a flat pack. So, uh, yeah. Elementary is pretty good. Next is Ubuntu. Now, I wouldn't use Ubuntu by itself because it's pretty slow. Uh, it it um, doesn't have very many features between versions. But it is also a very important distro because a lot of other distros, such as Linux Mint, Ubuntu, uh, Peppermint, Pop! OS, Linux Lite, and Farin are all based on Ubuntu in some form or another. Now, there's two versions. There's the long-term support version, which will give you, I believe, five years of support with free security and maintenance updates guaranteed. Um, and there's the... There's the non-LTS build. Now, this gives you uh, nine months of support. Now, a new version comes out every six months, so it gives you uh, support until the next version comes out and then three months to upgrade. So, yeah. That's um, Ubuntu 18.10 and Ubuntu 18.04. Now, I'm not a fan of the GNOME desktop, but there's actually quite a few flavors of Ubuntu. Uh, 
available. So there's Kubuntu, which uses like a KDE Plasma experience. Lubuntu, which is uh, basically if you, if you have a pretty bad computer, you would you put this on it and it makes it's a light and fast version using the LXQT desktop. Although the older version, the LTS version actually uses LXDE instead of LXQT, but whatever, I'm gonna get into desktops in another video. There's uh, Ubuntu Budgie, which is my favorite build of Ubuntu, and it uses the Budgie desktop. There's Ubuntu Kaiwen, which is made for Chinese users. There's Ubuntu Mate, which uses a continuation of Ubuntu's older desktop, aka GNOME 2. There's Ubuntu Studio, which is made for multimedia content creation. And there's Ubuntu, which uses the light but customizable XFCE desktop. Now I actually have all I actually have reviews of every single Ubuntu flavor on my channel, and I'll link to them in the description. Now one thing to keep in mind with the two Ubuntu with Ubuntu and Ubuntu flavors is that the software center kind of sucks. So if you want a good software center, I would re not recommend Ubuntu. The next distro I'll be showing you is Solus. Now Solus is the distro I'm currently using right now, and yeah, it uses the Budgie desktop, which is developed in-house by the Solus team. It's got a nice, nice uh, modern Raven menu. It's got a nice menu right here. I this is my favorite distro. It's also got a really good software center, and I think I think it's the best for general use, in my opinion. So if you just want a home operating system, just to install it and leave it, and you're not going to do stuff like software development or anything, you just want a web browser and like Photoshop, or Photoshop's not on Linux, or GIMP or something, this is the distro to go. However, it isn't very good for programming, because it doesn't have that many uh, dependencies needed for a lot of development, and it isn't very good for retro gaming, because it lacks a lot of emulators. There is RetroArch, but I mean standalone emulators. However, for just normal use, if you want just some file management, uh, a music player, video player, email client, etc., Sol Solus is one of the best for you. Next, we have Debian. Now, Debian is known for its stability. Now, basically, it's supposed to be the most stable Linux distro possible. Now, this is a little bit harder to install if you're a new user, however, if you really want stability, I think the learning curve is worth it. Now, it is kind of hard to get running on some systems also, because it lacks some proprietary drivers, but overall, Debian is a very good distro if you want a stable experience. Next is Linux Lite. Now, um, oh god, this light theme. There we go. Next is Linux Lite. Now what Linux Lite is, is it is a distro made for sort of less powerful computers, old computers, but also modern computers. Now this is great for new users because a lot of the time if you want to configure something that is sort of uh, behind the scenes of the system, like not like your wallpaper or something, if you want to do something that most that a power user would want to configure normally you would have to use the command line to configure power user stuff however linux Lite comes with something called light tools and light tools basically give you the ability to do stuff a power user would do in the command line using a graphical user interface so uh now it's also got a uh it's also got a pretty nice desktop it's nicely themed got nice multimedia support and overall it's pretty good next we have peppermint os now this is uh similar to linux Lite, although just without light tools it's made for older computers however the nice thing about this is it comes with an application called ice and ice allows you to turn any web app into an actual progressive web app you can use using site specific browsers so Basically, it's like having a locally installed application. So, Linux Lite is pretty cool. It um, uses the same desktop as uh, Linux Lite. Did I say Linux Lite is pretty cool? Peppermint's pretty cool. Now, it does have something similar to Lite Tweaks, but it's not as powerful as Lite Tweaks that Linux Lite has. 
Uh, I prefer Peppermint OS to Linux Lite because it's also got its own software center. That sim actually, I think it's um, an older version of the Mint Software Center, but it's also got the Mint Software Center, which I think is the best software center for Debian distros. Uh, it's got light tools and ice, so yeah, pretty nice distro. Now, Pop OS is pretty much a reskin of Ubuntu, although it also it uses Numix. Sorry, um, Dark Reader is messing up the website. But it uses Numix as instead of the normal standard Ubuntu theme. But also, it has a better installer, and it has a better, uh, it's got a better um, software center than Ubuntu does. And there's also an ISO with NVIDIA drivers pre-installed, which means that you won't have to get your own specific, you don't, won't have to install the drivers after, which is important if you're system like needs nvidia drivers to boot now some distros uh if your system can't boot without them you can go into no mode set uh however with this you can just download the nvidia iso right here although the system requirements are a bit high for this distro and the last but not least distro we're going to be talking about is farin os now farin os is a linux distro made for beginners and it's supposed to imitate windows basically not imitate but supposed to be themed like windows so there are windows layouts but there's also uh there's also uh windows themes to make it look more like windows and over and there's other features like a web browser switcher i don't know there's just tons and tons of uh features packed into this distro Although it uses this, it's currently based on Linux Mint. However, it's moving towards a KDE base, so soon it's going to be based on Kubuntu. So, which is a flavor of Ubuntu. So, yeah. Anyways, that is all of the distributions I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.